Hey traders, welcome back. And to everyone that's new, happy to have you here. Today we're gonna to be talking about something special and that is the MACD indicator for day trading, specifically on TOS and with a focus on the one minute time frame. Whew, I know that's a lot, but that's what we're gonna be covering. I got five examples for you guys and I'm gonna use all the data from last month where it was a little hectic for me. I only walked away with $6,700 profit, but it's okay. I was doing a lot of changes, specifically making adjustments to the MACD, trying to make it work for myself. Also a little fun fact, if you ever see this guy, Gerald Appel, he was the one who was credited with creating the MACD back in 1979. There you go, we're still using it today. Here's actually an example of a chart where I use the MACD and you can see some of the trades I've done on it. We're gonna talk a lot more about what all this means in a second, but here's some really important things to notice. First of all, the MACD is either converging or diverging. We'll talk about what you wanna be looking for and the strategies around that. The MACD is made up of a 26, 12, and 9 EMA. And when there's a cross from the slower moving exponential average to the faster moving exponential moving average, that is when you get something called a signal and that is often used as an indicator for a buy or sell. In this video, we're gonna quickly cover four topics. That is, what is the MACD? How to add it on your TOS charts? strategies for day trading the MACD on the one minute. I'll show you guys five examples. And then number four, how I plan to use the MACD going forward, specifically the summer versus winter months, so hotter and colder markets. Is it still gonna be as valid as it is right now? So the first thing we're gonna wanna do to get this thing set up is go to your trading screen and I have it right now on Trade and Active Trader. You can also have it here on Charts. Um, but let's go back to the Active Trader and click on Studies. We'll want to go to Edit Studies, and then from here, you can search for the MACD and go ahead and add it. Make sure to add two MACDs and then put it into one lower column so they can overlap. You can also use Histogram or Histogram Crossover and just use one of those, but those don't overlap and make those nice mountains that we'll talk about in a little bit. Also, shout out to Toby from our community for letting me know how to stack the MACDs I was using the histogram originally for the first half of the month. You'll quickly see the exponential moving averages, the 12, 26, and the nine. Again, the nine is the signal we're always looking for. Let's look at the settings. Now, I didn't need to adjust any inputs and options, so I left this as it is. What I did go ahead and do is change these things. To make it easy for you, I just added a picture here of every value you're gonna need to change. On the left-hand side is the upper MACD, and on the right-hand side is the lower MACD. This is how you get these nice mountains and it's a little bit hard to see on the SPYO. I'll show you guys some other tickers in a second here, but this is also how Ross Cameron from Warrior Trading has it set up, except he has it set up on light speed and doesn't show anything for TOS. So this is the closest I've been able to get it to resemble what he's been doing in case anyone is following him as well. By the way, if you want an even more in-depth breakdown of everything we talk about in this video, we have a whole entire post guide that goes through everything we discussed in this video. So go ahead and give it a check out. I'll link it in the video description below. Now, I did actually make a video about what two weeks ago about the MACD histogram so if you're curious about the MACD histogram check out that video I have a bunch of trade examples in it as well also a good reminder is that most indicators are lagging indicators including the MACD so at the end of the day price action is always king and I always recommend going to learn more about price action I think that is the most important thing the MACD is just a nice to have addition to help you avoid some pitfalls and we'll talk about those a little bit later as well now here's how I use the MACD. I use it in two specific ways. One is to identify new, hot, aggressive front sides. And then the second one is to identify when those front sides are a little bit more extended and they're getting weak. In the MACD lingo, those are classified by divergence when the MACD is growing apart. That is good, that is bullish. And when there's convergence, when the MACD is getting closer together at those tips of the mountains, that is bad, that is bearish. That is when you wanna sell or short. Let me show you guys some examples. Examples. Here is HPCO, a ticker we traded a few days ago actually, and notice the two front sides on this ticker. We got one right here and we got another one right here. Now with simple price action, you'll notice a big five minute breakout and then you get these nice entries on the one minute pullback. We have that again here and big five minute breakout here above VWAP. So I do wanna drill this into your mind. Price action is always king, but the MACD really comes in handy. Notice around 810, we get that five minute breakout. You'd have to be quick for that one minute entry but that's also where the MACD gives you that green signal where we're seeing divergence where the green is diverging from the red on the MACD 
We see that again at the market open where the price is ripping higher and the MACD has very, very strong divergence. Plus it's above VWAP and that's something that I always look for for price action trading as a momentum front side trader. However though, you'll quickly see that the MACD starts converging and that is when the green starts going closer to the red again, which means the front side move is getting weak and extended. Now thinking about price action, look at this big red one minute volume candle. That is also a red flag. Be very very careful when you see that HPCO in this area is getting choppy. It's having a lot of wicks. And then there's that conversion that comes in the MACD basically tells me I should be a little bit careful here. And this is probably not the time I want to hold for that 1050 breakout because there's a probably good chance it's going to have a fake out in flush. Here's the next example with PXMD. It's a little choppy, but at the market open, there was some good MACD indicator here. For me, it was in play when it popped over VWAP. That's really where the money was. I don't really like trading when the MACD is below VWAP. So that's why I did didn't trade sooner, but I got that pullback and that's what I was looking for. I did ease up trading this ticker quite quickly, not because the volume profile wasn't looking that great because technically the sell volume and the volume general is slowing down. Maybe there's going to be a breakout at that point, but look at that convergence coming, indicating that this ticker was getting really, really weak. And then look at that big old flush we had there. So in this case, the MACD helped me avoid those situations. Here's another classic example with NUWE where the MACD pushes green and starts to diverge from the red and I actually missed this ticker I, I was trading something else at the time and I came in super late and this was painful because look at that beautiful volume I and mean, we we're getting four million shares per one minute traded Whew, that is nice. Eventually though, we do hit convergence during that five minute pullback right here. That was pretty heavy. And then if we go back to the one minute chart, you can see that this ticker was losing steam. Although with all that volume, it is a little harder to spot with only price action. So eventually we do get that convergence and then there's that big fake out flush that you see and luckily I didn't get stuck on that one. This is really classic summer or weak market action as well, where you don't get those 30, 45 minutes, nice front side actions. You get like 15 minutes of somewhat front side, but oftentimes it's like covered with a bunch of chop really, really difficult to trade. So that's why the MACD in these slower markets, I find just to be really, really nice. Just like with the MACD histogram, I actually find it to be a really good indicator when I want to ease up, maybe stop using bigger size or maybe stop trading altogether, as opposed to when I want to enter. I feel like the classic price action for the entry is usually really good. Five minute breakout, one minute pullbacks, micro pullbacks, price action over the VWAP and so on and so forth. Pretty standard stuff. Let's go to example number four here with MOB. I think this is a really good example because we see a very clear mountain range forming. And this is something that is quite unique. The problem is that the second mountain range is smaller and warrants to be a little bit more cautious. And you could see actually that second mountain range where there is overall a divergence, which is typically good if it's inside a MACD, but if it's between two indicators, divergence is not good. In this case, the price is going up, but the mountain range is going lower. We have a new lower high on that second mountain range. So you want to be a little bit careful there. After the market opens, MLB had a nice little front side here. Again, there was that big old flush when the convergence started. So when the green started approaching the green, that's always a bit of a warning sign. Here's the fifth example with INAB. And I think this is the perfect follow-up example um, to number four, because this time we have an increasing mountain range forming on the MACD as opposed to a decreasing mountain range. So this was a really long front side action from about 9.30 till 10.20, which is crazy. Although it was a little bit slower at first. Increasing mountain ranges is a good sign that the momentum is getting better and better and more favorable. And you wanna start getting more and more bullish and increase that position size. These are the tickers to really milk. Let's quickly think about the price action as well. You can tell by the volume, specifically on the five minute chart, that it is looking really, really healthy. So always keep in mind, what the five minutes doing, what the overall volume's doing, you wanna see an increase in volume. And that is correlating really, really well with the MACD on the one minute. One thing I wanna point out here, price action related, is we had a big one minute breakout with huge volume. And typically this is a really good sign. And then it starts pulling back and you think, ooh, this is a really good entry. But notice the MACD where now it's having that mountain range with a lower new high. That's a really, really big red flag. It shows that momentum is dying. So again, in this case, 
MACD is giving you a really good indicator that it might be time to reduce size or not trade because the move is coming to an end. Always remember a lower high mountain range is a big red flag for continuation. I hope you're starting to see the value in the MACD in that oftentimes the end of the move is actually where the MACD comes most in handy. I know in the front side in the beginning of the move, it's a lot of like mixed indicators and I feel like it's a little bit tricky and I tend to just focus purely on price action, very clean, obvious moves. And if I can find that the MACD is showing nice green divergence as well, that's an extra confirmation that I should be getting extra aggressive. So here's a question you guys are probably all wondering, is the MACD worth for day trading? Will I continue using it after this one month trial? And the answer is, I believe so. And especially like Ross Cameron said from Warrior Trading, it's specifically good in a slower market because it helps you avoid all these false breakouts. Honestly, I could see how the MACD in a hotter market like we had in 2020 might get in the way because you'll get those mixed indicators that like, oh, I kind of want to ease off a little bit. But in reality, you know, this ticker is going from 100 to 300 to 3000 percent. We've seen it all. And I think the MACD might throw you off a little bit on that. So maybe once I notice the market's heating up and I, the MACD starts throwing me off a little bit, I might go ahead and remove it and save it for a slower market summer month. I think that's actually going to be a great follow up video. So I'll keep that in mind. I'll come out with another MACD video when I start deciding to remove the MACD or I get enough questions from you guys to cover another specific topic. Here's some questions for you. What are your thoughts on the MACD? Do you use it for your day trading? Will it only be an indicator for weaker and slower markets like in the summer? And do you use MACD more as a buy or a sell indicator or both? Anyway, I'm all ears. I'll see you guys in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys then next time. Like always guys, stay safe and make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao.